Hi folks, Happy New Year. Good to see you back. I must say hello to the Alibers out there that have flooded the channel with the Bohemian Rhapsody reaction I did with Alec Bata. Superb guitarist. And yeah, I'm moving straight on to check out more from him. There's a lot of cover songs that you guys have told me about that he does that are all right up my street. Avenged Sevenfold. Um, I'm even cur uh, the Eagles. I'm even curious to hear the likes of um, "A Kiss from a Rose" by Seal. I like the fact that he's doing lots of different types of music. But the main one that's jumped out to me is "Another Day" by Dream Theater. I'm a big Dream Theater fan, and "Another Day" is possibly my favorite Dream Theater song. It's soft images and words, and yeah, I've listened to that entire album countless times. Dream Theater's early work, in particular. Um, is superb so I couldn't wait so if you guys are enjoying these videos please feel free to like and subscribe and I also have my own music to, available to download so if you want to support the channel um, you can check the links below for my Bandcamp page um, or I have a buy me a coffee link as well so if you'd like to give a tip or support the channel in any way those are your two best ways to do it We'd appreciate you guys checking out some of my music too because you might find some stuff you like. I have some videos on my channel where I'm playing like a Steve Vai song or a Joe Satriani song and the links for those are in the description below. So if you're a fan of guitarists, please have a look through my channel. You may find some things in there that uh, are of interest to you. So without further ado, let's check out Alec Bata's cover of Another Day by Dream Theater. This is the stuff. Love it. What key is he in? I think he's in G sharp minor. Something like that. Um, so very deep tuning on the guitar, really. You can see where I paused it. Actually, you know, he's behind the nut of the guitar there and he's doing the bends that way. I have seen other guitarists doing that before, um, particularly on a Telecaster. You know, I play Telecasters myself. You can see one in the background there. You know, guitars that don't have a traditional um, vibrato bar um, that enable you to sort of bend the pitch. Um, you know, you have to kind of get creative in different ways. So you can get your vibrato by holding the guitar against you and sort of rocking it or doing this with a neck. You know, if you, if you sort of cradle the guitar with your in between your elbow, and then with your hand on the on the neck and you can kind of 
wrestle the guitar a little bit to get the vibrato coming through. And then you've got this technique as well, where you go behind the knot and press down, put the pressure on it, and then that changes the pitch of the note. Um, a, a guitarist that some of you guys might have heard of, John Five, who used to play for Marilyn Manson. If you watch some of his stuff, he plays a Telecaster. You see him doing this technique a lot. Um, what, I, what he seems to be a master of is the, uh, you know, the artificial harmonics. Where he's playing an octave above the fretted note. So the notes that he's playing with his left hand, he's an octave above that. Uh, he's using his index finger to find those and then using the thumb of his right hand. Um, and you know, depending on how many he's going to do, he's probably going to use his other digits as well to, to achieve those. A fantastic guitarist that has that in his technique is a guy by the name of Ted Green, who was an American jazz guitarist. Not that well known, um, very underrated. I'll maybe put a little clip in if I'm playing. Um, His, his stuff is very more jazz in terms of the harmony, but using this similar sort of technique, it, it allows the guitar to have much more pianistic kind of sort of feel, you know? So if you're playing traditionally, it, it's allowing you to hit the higher notes so you get a much... This type of effect to come through, it, it, it enables the guitar to sound much bigger in its uh, range. The arrangement so far is superb. You know, he's hitting all of the important notes. He's actually making me think of the the singing as well. You know, so not only is he is he highlighting the melody, but he's playing it in such an expressive way that the singer would play. So he's got a fantastic balance between melody and accompaniment. You know, it's one thing to put all of that stuff into an arrangement, but it's another thing to play it with the appropriate dynamics. So we get the important lines exaggerated and the less important lines, you know, the the, the non-dominant musical textures at a lower level. This guy knows what he's doing. This is superb. Let's push on. G sharp minor. love the way that he's using that little sort of subtle sort of slap against the strings in the right hand to, da, to get the sort of the snare beat that you would have. better than the Bohemian Rhapsody one, which is also superb. Love the feeling this. something I really love about this is that it's so dynamic it's full of emotion and yet there's nothing bombastic about it there's nothing showy about it he's not trying to he's not got all of these histrionics where he's like Ugh. you know when you play guitar it's really difficult to play guitar and not go Ooh, ha. you know <laughs> check out Steve Vai you know he's the master of Pulling phases. I love the way he's letting the music do the talking. It's very humble, very honest, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, solo time. Oh, man. Do you know something I must say? You know, I have to give the credit to Dream Theater. You know, not that they need any more credit. I mean, everybody knows Dream Theater are amazing. But it shows you, you know, how great a song is from a compositional point of view when it translates to other instruments and still sounds incredible. Um, this is superb. I'm going to push on a little bit because I want to hear what he's made of the John Petrucci solo. how much expression he's getting out of the guitar depending on where his right hand sits. Let me grab my guitar to show you. No, my guitar's not plugged in. Next time I'm doing one of these reactions, I really should set it up so that my guitar is plugged in and already ready. But all I'm going to do is demonstrate by just showing you with the guitar at the moment. So what I mean is, depending on where his right hand is placed here at the bridge, you're going to get different tones. The proper name would be timbre for that. So if you're picking close to the bridge you get a very bright and sparkly tone and then the closer you start going towards the neck of the guitar you get a darker tone so you watch that section there you'll notice how much his right hand is moving about here so that's something that really opens up the the tonal possibilities in your playing once you start to discover how much stuff moves around here near the bridge very bright and percussive and then then for those sort of darker tones you'll see his right hand come up to this sort of part here because you can't really do that from here. When you fret a note, all you can do is really give it vibrato and expression. How to color that note all comes from where you pick the string. I'll run that little tiny section back to see what I mean. If you pay attention to his right hand, you'll see it moving around there. Such a groove. And a nice playful ending to a kind of serious song, you know, a lot of melancholy and um, very introspective music. Superb. I will definitely be having more performances from him on my channel. I'm very impressed at what this guy can do on the guitar. Um, very emotional, very humble, very honest and sincere performance. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Thank you to all you guys that have been donating through the Buy Me A Coffee link and also been buying my music, you know, purchasing from Bandcamp. You know, I, that's amazing. Thank you very much. That is what supports this channel because all of these reactions are all copyright, so I don't earn anything from this, you know, and, and yeah, you're getting adverts and all that, but that's all being collected by the managers and all the rest of that. So if you do enjoy what I'm doing um, and you want to help support me, Bandcamp's your best bet. Go to Bandcamp, because you can buy that for the same price of the, of the coffee, and you're getting all my music, you know. So thank you very much to everybody that is helping support the channel that way. It means a lot.